Now for some fun stuff. Um, this was the first thing I did when I got the Tech 3 plotter. It's just very simple and kind of small. I just wanted something quick that I could put on the plotter to see if it worked. And I was able to get the whole plotter running and print this out with, in four different colors in about 30 minutes to an hour. So some of the drivers had a little couple of tricks to them, but, um, but if you watch all the videos that they have online, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory in setting them up and it shouldn't take you any time at all. So it was very quick to set up the plotter. Now I don't do generative stuff like this most of the time. I do more graphic design or big filled areas, very pop art kind of things. And this is on a wood panel. I often uh, do wood panels instead of frames because I think they look pretty good and they're a lot cheaper than a lot of frames. Um, I've also been experimenting a lot with uh, CMYK, so it's cyan, magenta, and yellow pens. Uh, cyan, magenta, yellow pen, and black um, for, different, for a full color of, uh, view. Now, you don't get a full color look, but you get interesting looks, and it takes a little bit of practice. This is one of the first ones I did. And uh, I did this one for the Halloween contest that Unitech had. Sadly, I did not win, but um, I thought it was a pretty good sugar skull. Anyway, so there's that. But let's get into the software. This is the Unitech Tech 3 software. And if you look in this menu here, you will see lots of stuff and you will see a very detailed program for a lot of things. Now don't get scared if you open this up and it like, looks complicated. There's a lot of stuff in here that I don't use. Um, a lot of this is for handwriting, for letter writing, for envelopes, for uh, invitation stuff. There's a lot of people that do that kind of work and that's great. And this program does all of that. But what I usually use is just the SVG feature down here. So if you go into that area and you hit open, and I'm just going to load a comic thing I did. This is a UFO blowing up a city. I thought it was pretty cool. But you'll see what it did is it, if I, this color button up here, if I turn that off, this is actually all the vectors that it's actually going to draw. But when it loads it in, it actually will color separate it because in the file in Illustrator, I've separated this out into layers. And so it knows those layers and it's put them in a, in a channel over here. So when you go to plot this, you just want to turn these off and now you have like cyan showing. So you put your cyan pin in and then you hit plot and that's all there is to it. And then you go to the next one, the next one. It's a very simple program to use. It really is just meant as a print driver or a plot driver. So you load your graph again and it exports it out to the plotter. So that's as simple as it gets. Now the tried and true method that a lot of people have always used is Inkscape. So I'm not going to go into all the details of how to install Inkscape, but here's the extension. So you go to extensions, you go to Unitech Tech 3 Plotter there, bring it up. It looks similar to the old one, but a little bit different. You want to change your serial port COM port if you're using a PC. I think it comes up automatically on the Mac. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it yet. Um, the other thing you want to really change is the XY work area. Now it comes default. The driver comes default is for an A3. So I've changed this to the A1. When I first tried it, I was getting errors because it thought the work that I was drawing was outside the work area. So just make sure you have that set to the size of plotter that you've got. And then the last one is uh, the machine ID. You grab that from the program that I just showed you, the Tech 3 software program, paste that in here and you're good to go. Now it works a little bit differently. You can actually see a little bit happening behind the scenes. Usually. In holding scape, you would just hit go and then the whole inkscape locks up and you can't see anything going. But this at least, at least gives you some feedback and ways to pause and things like that. So let me show you that. So when I hit apply, it's going to generate a bunch of G code here, right? So it takes a little bit of time. This is this graphic I have back here is a generative thing. I just wanted to do something simple that's a single line. It's like one line that just kind of loops around itself. And the reason I want to do that is I want to show how fast this plotter is. But let me, this G code should pop up any second now. There we go. So now you have a controller. So this is better than the old Inkscape uh, interface because now I can pause, I can continue, I can stop, I can switch the, you know, if I hit pause, I can change the pin out, all that kind of stuff. So let's just, just hit print. It should say plot in my opinion, but we'll, we'll go with print. So we go, yes, confirm run. And now you'll hear the plotter in the background starting to go and it's gonna run the G code by. So now the thing that's plotting is, like I said, a single line. So it put the pin down and then it's just going to draw these big loops and loops and loops and more loops over each other, right? And why I wanted to show this is I wanted to show you how fast this uh, plotter actually is. I'm just going to hit stop on this so we get the plotter stopped back there. But um, 
So as you watch this draw, it is drawing extremely fast. And that image that is drawing is about 20 inches by 16 inches. So it's a very large image. Now, not all uh, graphics that I do are a single line. You have to put the pin up and down, and that's where you, it takes time. Every time you put that pin up, it takes a little bit of time, or the travel moves between things take time. So the other graphic I have here is a mid-century modern graphic, and it has fill areas. Now, fill areas always have to be hatch filled. So it has to be a single line, and that single line is then filled with whatever pin color you have in there. So these are just cross-hatch filled. And the colors that I did for this mid-century modern piece is um, they, they finished in about um, 20 minutes. And if you've ever done any laser etching or you've done any fills of any kind in like a, like a 3D printer or anything, you know that the fill time is really laborious and slow. So even on these fill patterns, it's pretty darn fast. And now I've got this cranked up to like the top speed as well, right? The top speed for this, I forget what the number is off the top of my head, but I've got it almost to the top speed and the lines are still lining up almost perfectly. Uh, they're really almost dead on for everything. And that could just be an error. The error that I'm seeing could just be me putting the pin in the plotter. So it's pretty darn accurate even at high speed. So that's, that's pretty impressive. So there's a little demo of the plotter and let's go out of this program here. So let me kill this, kill this, and get rid of that. And go into, the last way you can like run this, there's another way too, but I'm not gonna go into it today. The, the last way I'm gonna show you today is light burn. Now I, I have lasers, I have a couple of lasers, and uh, I use light burn all the time. I, I really like light burn. Is it the right program for plotting? Uh, maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure, but uh, it does work as well if you're more comfortable with this kind of a program. So if you go into the machine settings, first you set up your whole machine as a gerbil. There is a video, again, online, showing you how to set up um, any of the Unitech products with Lightburn. You set up as a gerbil device, define your work area, and so on. But once you get there, there's this one control that you need to switch on here called Enable Z-Axis. Now, its de default is off, right? So default, turn that puppy on. Once you get that on, you hit OK. And then I've drawn a circle here on the screen. So this would just draw a one line circle. But if you go into the layer of this, bring up the layer palette, the little attributes for it, you can see that the Z offset right here is zero. So when you set up your pin on your, your plotter, usually on this particular plotter, it's three millimeters above or the thickness of a piece of acrylic. So I make this little alien head. You set the pin on top of this, that's the distance you take this away and that's the distance it is from the paper. So what you want to do in the Z offset is you want to hit negative three. So once you have that, once you go to start uh, your plot, it will actually drive the plotter. Now what it won't do is there are over here on this other side, there's fill mode, offset fill mode. Those will not work. Um, that would be neat if they did, they did work, but they do not work. Um, there is a way to get them to work, but it's a more advanced insertion of G-code kind of stuff, so I'm not going to go into that. So if you want to use this and try it out at least, you can go to line mode, and there is a free 15-day thing you can get on, on Lightburn. And I, I don't think Lightburn is that expensive in general anyway. For the power of this program for running my lasers, it's, it's a really bargain. So there you go. That's an overview of the Tech 3 plotter. I hope you enjoyed um, seeing it in action, and uh, look forward to... Uh, more plotting in the future.